everybody. Welcome back. I'm back again on VCTV, Venture Capital TV from Latokan to host uh, another episode discussing about how to find funding, how to find funding investors for your startup. So before I start introducing uh, the speakers of the panel today, I'd like to have a uh, so I'd like to introduce myself, I'm Sunny Mohanty. I regularly host VCTV based in Singapore. And yes, I love doing that. And today is a special episode as well because we have somebody who is going to share his, his, his project with us. He's going to present his project. He's looking to raise fund. So that's why he's here as well. So that's me, that's VCTV. Let's have a quick round of intro about our speakers. And there you go. Hi, hi Tushar. Hi, Gary. Good morning, afternoon. How are you? Great. How are you? Great. We are doing great. Thank you, Sunny. Welcome, welcome. Tushar, let's just start with you. A quick round of intro. You've been a regular speaker. You're a sort of family member, VCTV family member, as I like to say. And uh, just start, start with you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Myself, Tushar Kansil from Consultancy Ventures. <laughs> I'm an accomplished professional with experience spanning multiple sectors from venture capital, uh, from Big Four Consulting at Deloitte and Touche, from the London Stock Exchange listed Systema's uh, India unit, MTS India, to CFO of a Google Nine Partners own company, Distribution Logistics. Uh, I'm a mentor and judge at entrepreneurship sales of IIT Mumbai, IIT Delhi, IIT Chennai, and IIT Dhanbad. And uh, I'm also a venture advisor with Loyal VC, the NCR-led Canadian VC fund, having a core portfolio of over 160 investments in more than 35 countries. Uh, over the years, uh, last six years, have uh, arranged funding for startups and growth stage companies in diverse sectors, both technology and non-technology. And I've appeared in more than 125 webinars and talks. Uh, my opinion is sought by publications like CNN News 18, uh, Business World, Business and Economy, uh, Digital Market Asia. So happy to be here discussing this uh, wonderful topic. And thank you, Sunny, for having me again on this show today. Thanks. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, uh, Tusha. You bring in a wealth of experience and expertise to our panels, and we always welcome you on our panels. Thank you so much. Next, we have Gary Fuller. Hi, Gary. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. Well, I'm just a country boy from Pennsylvania, you know. That's <laughs> but it's all right, all right. <laughs> so, we do remember that. <laughs> so um yeah, my name's Gary Fowler. Great to be here today. I've done 17 startups. I've been involved in two unicorns. I was on the original management team of Click Software, so the sales force for 1.35 billion, and also EBIT.ai. I'm the co-founder and president of GST Get You Done Venture Studios a premier AI and quantum venture studio. Um, you know, I do a lot of, uh, I have a radio show in New York on Saturday nights, I Heart Radio. Uh, Our Digital World that I host with Zen Sam, the actress and model. Have some incredible guests uh, um, coming on. I'm not supposed to say which celebrities, but some really cool ones. Oh I'm just really happy. I want to get their autographs. That's what I want. Yes, yes. I, I've seen it. I've some seen pictures it. with them too, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> kind of fun. I feel like a kid in the candy store. Um, and I write a lot too. So I've written um, 161 articles in the last 14 months on AI and quantum. Focusing a lot now on some of the cutting edge I'm very interested in AI replications of uh, people in terms of your personality. So you you never lose a, a loved one. That's my next article on Forbes. Um, that's it. I mean, I just, um, I'm, I'm out there. I'm doing uh, IPOs. I'm doing a whole lot of other things. Just uh, keeping busy. Okay. That's not, that's it, Gary. That's a lot of, that's it. <laughs> So Gary is a legend, I would say. He's been a part of VCTV before even I started moderating on VCTV. So that's Gary Fowler. Oh, and I have and a show on VCTV called The Founders Report. Absolutely. And so Gary has got his own solo uh, show where he's moderating, hosting other speakers. So there you go. So I have no other words to introduce Gary other than 
Gary Fowler. Everybody knows him. And his GST Venture Studios are obviously has moved from uh, where it was to India, other regions as well, regionally as well. So expanded and probably partnership with Tussar, Tussar as well. So yeah, I mean, a lot of things happening when it comes to GST Venture Studios. And I'm also attending your, um, uh, basically your show with your, with a celebrity. I'm going to watch it as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, Zen, Zen is a very interesting. So Zen Sams is an elite model, uh, entrepreneur. She's an actress in Hollywood. She just appeared in the protocol and, um, and she's really nice. She's Greek Canadian actually speaks five languages. And it's really interesting because it's like, I talked to her. In fact, I'll talk to her later today. It's just incredible. It's a different world. One I've never, ever been around in my life, but I'm really interested in it. <laughs> yes, I'm really interested now to watch the show. All righty. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Tushar. So the topic today is uh, how to fund your startups. So according to a to recent study, over 90% of new businesses or startups, as, as we say, fail, fail during first year of, of operation. Lack of funding turns to be one of the most common reasons. Money is the bloodline of any business, the long, painstaking, yet exciting journey from the idea to revenue generating businesses needs a fuel named capital. <laughs> That's why at almost every stage of the business, entrepreneurs find themselves asking, how do I finance my startup? You know, now when you require funding, so when would you require funding depends largely on the nature and the type of the business. But once you've realized the need for fundraising, we would like to we would like to enlighten our our speak our viewers today how how to raise that funding once you've realized all these uh, you know sort of little milestones. Uh, so that's where our speakers bring in their expertise and experience and the knowledge. I've got somebody else joining as well. Okay, right. So, uh, so Tushar, sorry, Tushar, let's just start with you. Uh, yeah. So, so I would like to ask you about what is bootstrapping. So, you know, we hear like you know, I'm a. Sometimes you, uh, when you speak to startups, say we are bootstrapped. So, what does a bootstrapped startup mean? So let's just start from the basics. Well, a bootstrapped startup means that uh, the founder is using his own funds. He has not uh, taken funds from any investor. But uh, in many cases, uh, friends and family, which is FNF, uh, you know, the way it's called uh, in startup vocabulary, uh, friends and family do chip in uh, with initial funds and uh, help uh, the founders. Uh, and, you know, it makes sense as well because the real value gets created post uh, achievement of certain milestones uh, of the startup. So if you are uh, taking investors money too early, you are losing out because you have to give a, a good amount of equity in the initial round when the valuation is low. So it, uh, it uh, you know, bootstrapping means that you use your own money. You use uh, probably borrow some from your father, from uh, your brother or some friends and family and you utilize it uh, uh, to a certain extent till the time the business starts proving itself and uh, attracts those investors who can put money at a good valuation. Perfect. Thank you for answering that so nicely. So, uh, Gary, again, when a startup starts to, to uh, you know, look for funding, so I think as Tushar rightly said, friends and family are the ones who come into First, you know, sort of site like, okay, let's just go and get some money from them. So what happens? How, how easy or difficult it is to raise uh, uh, money from friends and family while you're bootstrapping your startup? How much money do your friends and family have? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's simple. important you know, as well. <laughs> and, I mean, the, the deal is, listen, we, most of the time when companies are founded, they're founded by technical uh, entrepreneurs. It's like almost 70% of the time. And so part of the challenge is, you know, one of the challenge when you're starting a company is how do you go down through and raise the money? Who do you talk to? What kind of network and connections? And this is like, keep it simple, stupid. So if you had had, have had success, 
the probability of getting funded is a whole lot higher. So when an entrepreneur, one of the reasons we started GSD is exactly because of that, because, you know, we've been going down through and I'm not, I'm not, this is an advertisement for GSD, but I'll tell you my own logic. I've done it for over uh, 35 years. And my first startup I started, I had no money. I was right out of graduate school. I asked my father, my father said, son, you got a graduate degree. You should be a professor in the university. I said, but dad, that's not what I want to do. But you studied all these years. I'm proud of you. And I was like, that's not what I want, dad. And so, <laughs> you know, I started my journey in entrepreneurship. I started the, a design construction company with new materials. It took off. Uh, two years later, my friends that were saying, oh, you shouldn't do it. They were saying, you've got the golden touch. I'll never forget it. And I'm like, there's nothing different, right? It's just I took the risk and it's like rolling dice. So you got to go out, create the credibility, use your background, especially today during the digital transformation. You got to have a presence online because the first thing you do when somebody has a Zoom call with you is they look you up exactly when you're on the screen with them. They Google your name. You better make sure there's a lot of stuff out there, not a lot of negative stuff. So make sure that you've got your social media. You don't put some wild pictures. Um, make sure you're writing some articles. Make sure you're involved, just like on VCTV, in pitching competitions, et cetera, so people can see who you are because it adds to the credibility. And as we go down through this journey, that credibility is going to become more and more important. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you get out there, the more trust there is, then you're going to start, you know, doing deals. So uh, in terms of family and friends, you just have to convince them that you got the right idea at the right place at the right time. And generally, when you do that, it's under $100,000 worth of funding. It's just enough to get you started, right? But it's kind of dangerous, too, because you don't know how to run a business. So you're coming in yeah. not knowing how to run a business. So, uh, you know, setting the business up. People, you know, uh, Harvard, the first MBA program was started at Harvard University to teach managers how to manage, not how to be entrepreneurs, right? And setting up a company. What are the legal requirements? Trademarks and copyrights. How do I get those done? How much does it cost? Patents, right? You may have a great idea, but maybe five other people own parts of that idea. How do you do those? Those are the secret sauces that you need to have. So journey one is, you know, convincing your family and friends that uh, to put some seed, pre-seed money in. The next thing is to go out just like we're going to do today is raising seed or series A capital, you know, going out to the right people. A lot of times, you know, practice makes perfect. So make sure you practice your pitch, rock the pitch. I went to Stanford University and took those classes at Stanford myself with an acting coach and a business coach and it wasn't easy it was really amazing you would come in and they say today there's a big problem they just found out that your product uh you know uh doesn't work and now you're going to be in front of the news you're in front of cnn please uh sit down and you would actually have to go through that scenario it was role playing but it put you on the spot and you learn how to think on your feet Practice, practice, practice your pitching. Make sure you have very concise messaging. Make sure that when you're talking about your product or service, you got a tagline. And that tagline sticks, sticks delivering tomorrow's technology today. It's something that catches their attention. I changed with Click Software, it was called IET. I changed the name of the company to Click Software. People said I've heard of it. There's zero probability. It's a little tiny company. But yeah. because we came up with a good name, People say, oh, I've heard of that. That's a come. I know that company. Uh, really? Okay, that's super. Yeah. And then after a while, people didn't know. And after a while, we did an IPO. Then it was sold to Salesforce, right? But come up with a really interesting name that's going to stick. Simple things. Keep it simple. Absolutely. Keep it simple. So moving past family and friends, um, what I have seen, crowdfunding uh, is also one of the I would say newer ways of funding a startup that has been gaining a lot of sort of traction or popularity lately. So it's like taking a loan, pre-order um, contribution or investments from more than one person at the same time. So Tushar, why you should consider crowdfunding as a funding option for a startup? For example, you are just a 
we just made a startup which is bootstrapped, okay, below 100K funding, good enough, but now they're ready to scale. So, well, so as for you, do you think crowdfunding and why is a funding option for their, for their startup? Sunny, it's a good option. Crowdfunding is a good option. But uh, the only thing is that there has to be somebody who lends trust to the whole exercise. So, you know, like uh, uh, I, I uh, also manage an angel network. So, you know, in that network, what we do is uh, we uh, choose companies and then present to the angels. And uh, so the angels, they bank on our knowledge of the market. Right. And uh, secondly, they want to be sure that we have done our part of the due diligence uh, of these companies before presenting it to them. And what kind of due diligence that, you know, if the founder, a very young founder is saying that he has a particular business in his side of town, then, you know, you would have uh, spoken to some distributor, you would have spoken to some, uh, uh, some of the customers and, and, you know, uh, you would have checked the basic things like, you know, the initial turnover, which the, uh, which the company is saying is correct. Uh, that, you know, from a statutory point of view, from a regulatory point of view, the company is set up properly and is paying its taxes. Uh, that, yeah. you know, the uh, the agreement between the founders is there. In many cases, the founders, they forget to have an agreement uh, amongst them. And it creates such a problem later on. Because once the company grows, then yeah. suppose a founder is having... 50% and another founder, co-founder is having 30%, then there are problems in uh, between them. So, uh, yep. and you know, so, so, you know, this due diligence, uh, the very basic due diligence, uh, and, you know, from an accounting perspective, whether the accounts have been maintained properly. So, you yep. know, all these factors, they create trust and trust is a, such a commodity that, uh, you know, you might be the best uh, founder out there in the market, having the best company. But if you don't have uh, contacts, if you don't have a good advisor, if you don't have a good investment banker, a mentor, then, you know, uh, how can the investor trust you? So right. there comes the benefit of being in good alumni circles, uh, having a good network, uh, uh, you know, uh, and so so that these uh, investors, they can bank on your knowledge, on your market knowledge, on your, uh, uh, you know, uh, your capacity to uh, check the company's background. And that's that's how the uh, the second step <coughs> in achieving achieving funding comes. Right. Uh, thank thank you, Tushar. Uh, um, so, Gary, I uh, just want to continue with what Tushal mentioned. Obviously, he's a part of Angel Group. Uh, so, when do angel investors come into play? What stage uh, of a startup? Is it like early, pre, uh, or just after they've got bootstrapped? And what generally is their stake in the company? Do they keep equity instead of funding them? And what are some of the shortcomings of this angel investments? Yeah, so in terms of angels, you know, the angels are people that come in generally after the a family and friends round. And they're, in my opinion, from California, they're generally yeah. people who have had success in corporations. Um, they're interested in investing their own money into opportunities, or sometimes they have angel groups um, like the Bay Area Angels. Um, and They'll come in and they'll look at particular opportunities. Sometimes you pitch to them. They do group meetings once a month and you pitch to them. So, but they're, they're into smaller rounds under $250,000 rounds generally. Um, and, but, you know, every time you go out and you get around, you're going to lose part of your company. So you got to realize, and these guys uh, and ladies are pretty sharp. And they, you know, they take a nice size. The last thing you want to do, Sonny, is get so many rounds that you come in that you're working for them and you have very little part of the company, right? You you own very little of the company and, yeah. you know, you're building up all this equity and opportunity for everybody else, but not yourself. And that does happen. So 
my suggestion is I've gone down through and I've done, you know, I've raised money from angels. I've raised uh, money from family and friends. The situation is you want to try to keep your your uh, purse strings tight. You want to be really tight with the finances to have the money last as long as it can because you don't want to give up too much of a percentage of what you have. And you want to, one of the other mistakes that I see a lot of times is that founders raise too little money. They come in mm. and because they don't know how to raise money, they raise smaller rounds or they raise it in the wrong place. For instance, if you raise money in Germany compared to Silicon Valley, your valuations are most probably going to be a lot less, right? And you're going to get a lot less in terms of a round. The A round yeah. in, in Germany could be, you know, several millions dollars. The A round in California could be, you know, $10 million, $15 million. It's a different kind of round. So make sure that yeah. you take those kind of things into consideration. And Tushar is right. You got to make sure that all your your accounting set up, your cap tables correct, you know, that you understand that the investor will understand once a data room set up, how much, what they're going to get of the company. You have an employee yep. stock program put in place where you give 15 to 20% of the shares to the uh, employees. That's the number, right? And right. how, what, how many advisors do you have? It's really important to have name brand recognition advisors. So if you have advisors that are, for instance, Rick Orloff, the former chief security officer at Apple is on our board, and Bill Riker, the um, Guy Kawasaki's partner in Garage. Why do you want them? Well, Rick is well known as one of the top security and privacy person. And so that always comes up, security and privacy. People talk about it. You want to make sure you have somebody that's an expert. And then you need somebody that's connected in Silicon Valley. And people say, well, why Silicon Valley? Because it's not just about Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is a port to the rest of the world. So if I want to raise money in India, if I want to raise money in Africa, there's most probably somebody from Africa, somebody from India, people interested in, in those uh, regions that are located there. It just makes it a lot easier. And they're generally really sophisticated too. So you're not going to come in and they're not going to ask questions that make zero sense. They're going to be right to the point and they're there to make money. Ah, the other thing is family offices, right? Like our yeah. friend Marin. Um, having family offices seems to be easier to raise money from because you're dealing this multi-generational wealth and they're, they may not have as much technical expertise, some of them, but what they do have is they have the desire to increase the value of their family wealth. And so a lot of the wealthiest families, uh, Rockefeller families have Ben Rock, uh, DuPont family, they, and they have their own uh, family offices. And once yeah. you go in that, it's kind of like um, it's not talked about a lot. And there's not really a, a real list of family offices. They talk about them, but you have to have an introduction, a warm introduction to get in. And once you're in, it's an entirely different world because the amount of money they have is uh, incredible. And they're interested in things like artificial intelligence. They're interested in quantum computing. They're interested in cybersecurity. They're interested in topics uh, because they know that that's how the world is uh, uh, changing. Right. And they're right on top of it. And generally, the th what I'm seeing is third generation now of that wealth. OK. Well, OK, that's uh, Angel's. Uh, Sunny, sorry. can I just yeah. add something here? Yeah, sure. You you, you said uh, what are the negatives uh, to uh, getting an angel sorry. investment? Mm -hmm. So basically, okay. sometimes what happens is if you are going for crowdfunding, then a lot of people are putting very, very small amount. So it uh, populates your cap cap table, you know, so you have a lot of people to deal with. And uh, that sometimes is problematic. So uh, I've seen, uh, uh, you know, companies, uh, they actually create a SPV, a special purpose vehicle, and they uh, pull in the money and then invest through the SPV. So uh, right. that makes it easier for the uh, startup to govern or manage uh, its shareholders. Right. Great. Uh, thank you, Tushar. Thank you, Gary. Okay, this is this is VCTV. We talk about venture capitalists. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, so when it comes to venture, we talk about big bets, right? Um, uh, 
so ventures are uh, venture capitalists are professionals who are managing maybe funds, big funds, huge potential. Um, so they use, usually invest into against equity uh, uh, and exit when there is an IPO or an acquisition. So let's just quickly touch because we have a pitch uh, session coming up. Let's just quickly uh, touch upon how to raise, how to approach and raise money through venture, as well as uh, incubators and accelerators. Um, Tushar. Uh, so, you know, uh, in the initial round, uh, when we have an option to take it from angels, we have an option uh, to take it from some of the schemes of the government. So, you know, here in India, uh, the government offers uh, $40,000 to $50,000, uh, which, uh, you know, you can take from the government as an initial seed funding. Uh, then, you know, uh, accelerators and incubators, uh, incubators are mostly uh, entities which are linked to an educational institution and uh, they uh, help the initial rounds of the company at the time when the founder practically does not know anything. So they help the founder, uh, they take initial uh, equity amount, uh, equity can be between 3 to 8 percent and that uh, 3 to 8 percent is the kind of equity which accelerators also take. Uh, but accelerators come in much later, uh, incubators come in early and uh, they help, uh, you know, so there is this uh, incubator in Gurgaon, uh, they are, uh, their four X CXOs uh, run that incubator and uh, what they do is they offer a 16 weeks uh, initial program where, uh, uh, where they give a download of uh, all the uh, all the aspects of the company uh, management uh, and uh, they uh, incubate the company for two years. And, uh, you know, during this two years, uh, the company has an option of coming back to the incubator whenever it needs any help. Uh, but for the uh, purpose of uh, making them uh, understand the workings of a company, it's a 16 weeks kind of program. And uh, accelerators are mostly private uh, accelerators they help uh, like you know they have uh, tie ups and they are they have empaneled uh, uh, chartered accountants uh, cs lawyers uh, they have uh, uh, co working spaces in many cases and uh, they have tie ups with amazon web server or uh, microsoft cloud uh, and you know they offer such services at a cheaper uh, rate in many cases uh, free of cost and uh, that's how these guys come in. Uh, in terms of uh, putting actual hard cash, uh, they put in small amounts. So, you know, an accelerator, in, uh, typically I've seen uh, they put between $200,000 uh, to something like $400,000. And uh, that's, that's the, you know, uh, that's the way they function. Right. It's good to know because a lot of people, a lot of startups need that, uh, them, right? That's why they are there, the incubators and accelerators. And I've seen that once the funding is discussion is uh, is over, that's where they need to go global. I mean, obviously they are raising. Startups are always raising, right? So Gary, over to you with the same question. VCs, start, uh, and, uh, sorry, no, VCs, incubators and accelerators, how can they help uh, raise money? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, so I started the Top Accelerator in Russia. One, one of the things that we did is we curated those companies so that when investors would look at them, they would find companies that meet their specifications. So the operating, um, they understand how the company operates. The cap table was right. The legal stuff was right. The pieces were in light. So they go to places where they can find companies that have cool technology, but also meet their criteria. So what you want to... So through an accelerator, they give very small rounds generally, like under 150,000. And they take somewhere, depends on the group, five, 10%. So sometimes it's a, it's a good thing. But if it's a starting point for the company to understand how to be able to set it up to be able to um, raise money for the future. I know in our accelerator, we do it a little bit differently. What we do is we actually do learning by doing. And we bring those top tier VCs in as mentors. So the VCs come in and actually, you know, so you'll get people from 
uh, Coastal Adventures or top tier VCs, SoftBank, but they'll actually say, these are the kind of things you should take a look at. And they give the feedback. And that's really what it's all about. And then the accelerators to guide you, it's kind of like having a GPS system guide you to where you should be to be able to take that company to the next levels. So 120,000 or 150,000 is not going to be the end all. It's just to get you to the next level. Then the other thing is accelerators have relationships with venture capital firms and family offices. And so um, what they'll do is they'll do some of those intros and they'll work with those family offices and VCs in certain areas like artificial intelligence for supply chain or health tech. And so they know who to talk to. It just gets you into that group and gets you into that connection. Uh, thank you so much, Gary, uh, Tushar. So, uh, well, I think we covered most of the most of the topics uh, under how to raise uh, funding, like starting from angel bootstrapping, VCs, accelerators, incubators, uh, angels, yeah, crowdfunding. We have a startup today who are going to pitch. So, who I, I see two people, uh, Shashi, and I see Nishal as well. So, Sashi, are you the one who is going to speak and present? Yep. Yep. Okay. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Um, thank you, Sony. Uh, so, uh, why I'm here is the same reason that you all are discussing today. And uh, I learned a lot from uh, hearing to your discussions and everything. So, even though you have not personally experienced and do you know, uh, none of us have the ownership of our domains, names, and TLDs, which we are using for our day-to-day -day lives and uh, businesses, right? Imagine if you are hardly developed business website or your truth-revealing media site disappeared from the internet overnight. So, and even since we are moving forward to a cyberspace and cyber wars are about to happen as per the intelligent people in the world who are saying like that, and uh, so assume if any country level, top level domain vanished from the internet overnight, so that the particular country will be in a mess. Their stock markets won't work, their aviation systems won't work, and it will be a financial crisis and uh, uh, it will be a nightmare for a country, right? This is because you do not own your domains, nothing but you have rented your domains from the domain registers. And do you aware that we are surfing on an internet that support endless censorship and data indexing, which favors many requirements of governments and uh, religious organizations, company advertisement contracts, and so forth. So all these scenarios are in the current internet uh, because of the censorship and uh, monopoly created on domain names and TLDs by two organizations called ICANN and IANA. So can we move into the next slide? So what is the possible solution uh, for this situation? Because this is a global threat that we are looking at, even though that we have not understand. The possible solution is decentralizing the internet in a way that it doesn't have the same choke points. Like, so except what we are going to do is we are introducing blockchain-based decentralized internet and this entire ecosystem will give you all in one solution with a browser, domain name system, domain reservation system, and decentralized hosting, and uh, extensively cost effective for any domain user, right? So we are paying annually for our domains for the moment. And your ownership will be identified through NFT, which is called non-fungible token. And your privacy will be very high since this is running on the uh, blockchain. And uh, considering the top level domains, right? So in the current system of the internet, if you are going to create a top level domain, so it will cost you millions of dollars and uh, years of time. So in our system, users can easily purchase TLDs, not only domains even. Can we move into the next slide, please? <clears throat> so how we are going to do that? So these are the project components that we do have in our ecosystem. First one is Exit 
DNS. Except DNS will be running by the community. It could be run on your computer, it could be run in your mining machine or whatever it is as nodes. And these node runners will get staked when people are buying domains and TLDs. Since it is run by the community, so no one will be able to shut down your domain or TLDs at their wish, but the community through voting system, which we have created. Now, just as example, Bitcoin is unstoppable just because of the miners. The same system we have applied for this DNS system in here. And the exit domain reservation system. So the entire project that we are looking at decentralization and plus the agnostic blockchain model, because we don't want to be depend on one blockchain model. Right. So there are so many blockchains are coming like Ethereum came and Neo and Stellar and blah, blah. There's so many new blockchains are also coming into the Internet. So we don't want to depend on one blockchain. So what people can do is when you are buying your TLD or a domain, we'll be providing you to mint your NFT, which will be pegged into your domain name or the TLD in whatever the blockchain that you would like to have. Right. So. And uh, uh, next uh, most important thing is when you are creating a TLD, as an example, let's say somebody got dot India TLD, and if the Indian government got the dot India TLD, then Indian government can allow their people to create domain names under the TLD, and some portion of the domain purchasing price will be goes to the TLD owner. That is one of the main uh, key features that we do have in our system. And except browser and browser extension, but why we need a browser and extension? Because these domains and TLDs won't be get supported by the existing browsers. So when you are surfing the internet, so what we have done is we have created the browser extension, which we have already got approved by Google and it's launched. So <clears throat> except browser and browser extension will support you to browse this internet. And except uh, token, the futuristic key for this ecosystem. What we'll do is, except token even agnostic model, I will come into the token economics in the latter part. So when people are purchasing domains and TLDs, only 2.1 million except tokens will be available for the market. For the moment, it's uh, minted on Binance chain. And these token holders will get staked 21% of the whatever the price of the domain or the TLD among 2.1 million token holders, right? and uh, Exim uh, the hosting part. So we will be providing the hosting uh, through the uh, interplanetary file system, which is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, hypermedia protocol. We are initially uh, uh, with our first version of ecosystem will allow you to host a single page uh, website uh, when we are launching it on 20th of August. So can I move to the next slide, please? Yo. <clears throat> so this is the evolution. The prevailing domain name system is centralized and vulnerable, and you would get hacked at any time, and they will seize you or revoke you at any time. And except domain name system, it's decentralized and run by the community. So even by being the creators, we are not going to have the control of it. And user cannot uh, own their domains because we have rented it. That's why we are paying annually for our domain registers. Right? So. Uh, in our system, user can own their domains and even the TLDs through which will identify uh, the system by NFTs. And uh, the present prevailing system that we are paying uh, annual fees, as I say, so in our system, you don't have to pay annually the same amount of money that you are going to pay uh, only one time in your entire lifetime. And uh, all the top level domains, .lk.com, .org, cannot be purchased conveniently because I can and I announce that. And in our site, you can purchase, as example, if my name is Shashi, Shashi Megavarna, so I can purchase .megavarna TLD and I can create a website called Shashi.megavarna, only no.com, no.org, nothing will be integrated after that. And with the current system, your privacy is at a risk because we all prefer the privacy and within our system, you have the highest privacy. Can I move into the next slide? 
yeah when it comes to the cryptocurrency projects the most of the things uh, most valuable thing that people are looking at the token economy so if you are coming up with some price or uh, a value appreciation for your token there should be some facts and figures that you have to be very considering we have a very low supply like 2.1 million and this is a utility token and will be distributed to the market in different different stages where we have 100% raise our funds uh, through the pre sale and ieo is uh, happening with you all in la token and the ido we will be uh, happy to announce that uh, as soon as the io ends and in few different stages that we are going to release the tokens into the market in different different exchanges because as you know the exchanges has tiers so we are going step by step until we reach the best tier in the market the entire uh, funding round will be somewhere around uh, 30 million and 825000 dollars at the end of the uh token sales can i move to the next round yeah so how we came up with these numbers and everything that is the most important thing right so if you take the current domain life cycle right so what we do is we are registering our domain and uh, after that next year we are renewing our domain and if we are not going to renew that and it will be again available for the market in exip that we are going to eliminate this renew and deletion part right so as per the current uh, data so uh, usually 692 domains are issued to the market with the current internet uh, per minute actually so what we are planning is only the virgin registration part of the market so 1514 tlds are available in the market and 363 uh, 3.5 million domains are in the market and exif will penetrate a share of virgin registrations for the bare minimum and so that's how we have come up with our numbers can i move to the next slide considering as the bare minimum of the market so uh, considering that we are going to acquire 0.5% of uh, tld market and 1% of the domain markets and uh, considering the facts like how the btc has uh, acquired their market percentage wise and uh, the uh, industry average what is a crypto investor is considering about getting the return in and so we have come up with the solution at the bare minimum that our token will be uh, valued at 13.3 at the first year which we is considering as the 2022 because 2021 we are uh, considering only on token sale and we will be uh, as per the allocation budgets and uh, uh, custom acquisition rate as per the allocation budget so we will be acquiring at least 361161 uh domains and uh, 173635 tlds plus everything considering uh, all the facts and figures so we consider in 5 years the uh, token value as per the bare minimum that we have considered will be 66.1 but the crypto market is so different stage when people uh, trading uh, your tokens and everything and we have special things like staking so we can expect something more than that or we don't know even less than that so shall we may, uh, make it to the next slide please yeah so the current status so current status is that the first version of exis ecosystem that we are going to launch on 20th of august and our drs system already we have launched our domain extension is already launched the entire working product will be available on the market on 20th august and uh, our smart contract audit is going on because most of the top tier exchanges expecting that and our io is ongoing on with la token and um, for the moment i am very happy to announce but legally i can't announce the names of the exchanges multiple top tier exchanges have already approved exit so upcoming events will be uh, our dex offering and uh, our version 2 of the uh, entire ecosystem and the browser and uh, dynamic web hosting which we are planning to have on uh, 20th of august so this is the basically the roadmap of how we have come up to this level and with the minimum of investment that we got as per the 
topic that we are discussing uh, today and uh, yep so i would like to have okay. the questions so uh, did you share your founding team members information is is, is um, it there i think slide? you can find yeah so uh, regarding the founding team members you can find it out in our website but uh, to be honest that we don't have advisors for the moment because we are uh, starting with uh, very minimum capital so we have been uh, captured by so many uh, top line advisors for the moment but if we are going into the private chat uh, as the investors with you also we can declare all those things and the founding team i can tell you the uh, our nft platform creation creators Jashi, this is gary listen fundamental yeah. a couple of things yeah. and i've done thousands of presentations and i've had 4000 companies through my accelerator right you yeah. got to like keep it short and sweet and you got to captivate people. You got to enchant people. I, I'm yeah. not sure exactly what you got. You're giving us like a fire hose. You know what I mean? We're trying to drink out of a fire hose. Seriously. You got to like snap it up. And I think, you know, you've got something there, but I'm not sure hundred percent what it is because there's so much. The other thing is you got to have the founding team members because I don't know who you are. Right. Okay. I don't have a clue. And I don't know who your, fa your partners are. I don't know if you're in some garage somewhere and, and uh you know mumbai or where you are but you need to do that are they iit graduates where did how did you come to this journey and i'm not saying answer it you've just given us too much right just now you gotta like snap it up you gotta have the captivating enchanting side you gotta talk about what the value proposition what the market looks like today why this is gonna from my perspective dominate then you gotta come up with all the benefits that you bring to the table, what you've already done, what success, do you have revenue or not? You know, those kind of things and why your team can pull this off, right? Why you better than anybody else have one is that this will work and two is that you could pull it off. So that's what I would do from my perspective. Okay. Um, you know, I it, understand. It, yep. And uh, can I uh, come here, Sunny? Sure. Yes. Yes. What you are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Shashi, uh, you know, as uh, Gary said, uh, you know, see, end of the day, uh, anybody who would be putting in his money would be betting on the founders. Yeah. And uh, if he's uh, sensing that it's this one man company, then, you know, the risk uh, associated with the company uh, is more. Yeah. So, you know, you have to have a balanced uh, a team slide uh, there. You know, they might not be co-founders. They can be um, uh, on a salary. They can be having ESOPs or anything like that. But you have to uh, make it more rich, uh, you know, in terms of diversity. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, you presented it uh, like a techie presents it. You know, a techie presents his product like a... He's won a Olympic gold medal. So there is nothing wrong in that. But, you know, you have to keep in mind that uh, most of the investors who would be putting in money, they are not techies. So, you know, end of the day, you have to give them some uh, good idea about the product, about how it will make money, uh, what is the current traction, as in how much business you are doing right now, who are your competitors, uh, you know, it helps in identifying your business model. If you tell the name, uh, give us some names, names of your competitors and, you know, what is, what are your competitive advantages uh, as compared to these uh, competitors and also some projections. You, you shared the projections there, but uh, it, it was a little bit cluttered as in we could not make out much. Uh, and also the fund ask uh, that, you know, how much money you are asking for and how will you use them? Uh, also, some kind of a future roadmap uh, where you give uh, numbers, not only financial numbers, but also uh, in terms of opening new office or uh, uh, launching the next version of the product or uh, launching something new or uh, reaching a team strength of 50 people. And, you know, so so that would have made it more attuned to uh, how an investor wants to see the investment. So, you know, while you presented the technological side very well, I must compliment you. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, my advice is that uh, 
for from an investor perspective you have to sit on the investor's shoes and look at it yeah, yeah. i mean you gotta it can't be a one person show it doesn't work shashi and you've had you know the 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 num amount of, the numbers that you have there 30 million dollars uh for one person show i mean i'm not saying you can't do it but the probability is really high and i wouldn't put my money where that is honestly you got how many people? So tell me directly, how many people are on your team? Yeah, so uh, because this how is many, a five minute pitch, so I can't so pitch uh, Shashi, everything. Uh, Shashi, how many people yeah. are on your team? So we do have uh, 10 people uh, currently permanently working in our team. They are blockchain experts, cybersecurity experts, and marketing experts, plus uh, UI UX people. Okay, so you need to go down through and put that slide up. You need to, you know, this is, you may have a great idea. But a lot of great ideas never come to market or they never uh, become successful because, you know, it's a, and that's a tendency to charge right. A lot of times when technical founders try to present stuff, they try to you're going to buy this no matter what. They don't try to enchant you and get you excited about it. Right. They don't yeah. have the business sense behind it. And um, so I like what you I it's interesting, but um, it wouldn't be interesting enough for me to invest in. Right. It's interesting, but not you. There are too many pieces. So go down through. If I was you go through Guy Kawasaki's presentations, um, he's got his um, presentation methodology and I've talked to him directly about it. Use that and come up with a very short version of what you have. Right. Um, a shorter version and have those points in there to give us um to make us feel warm and fuzzy. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, Gary and Tushar. I think Sashi, this is for you to take back um, the feedback. Uh, you know, uh, to work on your presentation and pitch deck. I hope uh, you take it in a positive spirit. Yeah, of course. And, uh, so be, because yes. uh, I was preparing for five minute pitch, and uh, I never thought because. Uh, what uh, they said, I totally agreed. So without having a look at the team and everything, so I thought that within five minutes, I can't be pitch everything because I just tried to explain about the product because the key element of the project is the product. But I totally accepted and agreed what you all are saying. Thank you. Awesome. That's 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 what uh, we would like to hear from you, Shashi. That's the spirit of a founder. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's take some closing remarks. We've got five more minutes. Tushar, your closing thoughts for the session today my closing thought is that uh, you see vc circle you see uh, tech tech star asia tech stars you see uh, your story you see every day five to ten companies are getting millions of dollars so yeah. you know there is enough funding out there uh, get the right team get the right, right mentor uh, the right advisor uh, who prepares you well to uh, receive this and present yourself well and also uh, help uh, you create a better investable fundable product and a company so uh, i am available on linkedin uh, by my name to shar kansal i'm also uh, check my website consultancy.com and uh, my email is tk at consultancy.com happy to uh, help wherever possible thank you so much you. Uh, sunny thank gary you. and shashi thank you Sure, Thank sure, you, Tushar. Sure. You're rightly said. There are a lot of liquidity in the market. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Gary, over to you. Yeah, yeah. No, these are exciting times. The digital transformation is upon us. For companies that uh, take advantage of the opportunity to reach uh, investors everywhere from wherever they are, is it's a great opportunity if you do it the right way. As I said, credibility in the market. Make sure that you've got an online presence. Make sure that people are talking about your company, just like Shashi did today. Do a lot, as many pitches as you possibly can so you've got that stuff out there. Uh, it ain't easy, or everybody would do it, but you can really streamline the process to make your path to gl going global successful, and there are ways to do that. My name's Gary Fowler. You can reach me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Check out my shows. Uh, great to be here today. Great to see you, Sunny Tushar and Shashi and stay happy keep smiling and uh, go get them. Thank you. Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. Quickly, a few words from you before we wrap up. Your closing thoughts, Sashi. 
Yeah, uh, so actually I have really enjoyed and I learned a lot uh, because uh, uh, this is the first time that I am pitching this to uh, some of the VCs. So we have been funded uh, through some uh, personal contacts as uh, bootstrapping as uh, Gary and Tusha was consulting in the uh, first session of the thing. So there are a lot of things that we have to focus on everything. Uh, thanks, Tusha. And I have sent you the LinkedIn uh, message for the moment. And Mr. Gary, I will be in touch with you for the rest of the things. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Gary, Tushar, and Sashi for making this uh, session very uh, engaging and informative. And take care, guys, viewers. I'm going to be back again. Until then, keep smiling and stay healthy. Bye.